Ladies, have you ever wished that you could be more creative in your business, in your life, just in general? What if I were to tell you that each of us has that ability, that ability to be creative? Welcome to the Rebel Tribe, where every day we empower your hustle and help you find ways to see more, do more, and most importantly, to be more. And today I want to talk to you about boosting your creativity because creativity is all around us. It's each of us has that ability. We really do. It's just part of who we are. Sometimes it comes easy and, and sometimes it doesn't. And if the latter is the case for you and creativity seems challenging, it doesn't have to be. Trust me, I know. I grew up in a family of artists and writers and painters and I can't draw stick people. So I thought I did not have a creative bone in my body, but I discovered that all you need to do is train yourself to be creative. And you'll be surprised that it can be as simple as practicing your powers of observation and becoming better aware of your surroundings. So I'm going to give you some tips that you can try that will help you improve your observation skills, and that will in turn help improve your creative skills. So the first one is to pay attention to details. Now, I have trouble with this because this one requires you to slow down and be mindful about what you're doing and where you are. So, for example, when you get dressed, uh, pay attention to what you do first and what you do second and so on. And then when you leave your house, look at and notice the color of your door, um, who's in the neighborhood around you. What are the, what is the are the leaves changing yet? Is it spring, summer, winter? What is the weather like? Just look at all these little things that will help you learn to be present in the moment, no matter what you're doing. And then this can carry over into creativity. When you're mindful of what you're doing, you see things in a different light, and your creativity begins to come alive. It also helps to do something different. Sometimes all it takes to not only hone your observation skills, but also get the creative juices flowing is to simply take the time to do something different. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate like you know, running off and taking an exotic vacation. It can be something as simple as visiting a new restaurant in town or a new museum locally or someplace you've never been before. When you do something new, you're more aware of what's going on around you because you're paying closer attention while observing what it is that you see and smell and hear and feel and taste. All of your senses come into play. Or you can do something that's a little bit more fun, okay? Go to a park or a coffee shop or some other public place with a pen and a notepad. This can be a lot of fun because people watching can be very interesting. So set aside some time to head to a nearby park or anywhere public and just observe those around you. Pay attention to how they walk, what they're wearing, how they interact with others. As you observe them, begin to write down different details. Pay attention to your senses and write about things you see and hear and smell. Don't spend too much time thinking. Just write whatever pops into your head. Again, this helps you improve your observation skills, and it also helps you learn to focus and be mindful on what's going on around you. And as you do this exercise and begin writing, you're going to start using those creative thinking brain muscles that need to be exercised. Being mindful and observant is a skill we can all improve upon. Too often we go through life missing so many of the details, but if you make it a point to notice what's happening around you, you'll soon find many creative ways to use what you learn in your writing or in your artwork or in other creative endeavors. Now, you can't force creativity, so you need to know when to work and when to stop. There are courses and books out there about it. You don't have to pay top dollar to buy a course or buy self-help books, okay? I mean, those aren't bad things, but creativity is such an individual experience. It's something that you can develop and practice on your own. And just like all the other muscles in your body, 
it just needs to be worked. Your brain is a muscle and it needs to be worked. And there are many different things that you can do to get your creative juices flowing. But the most important tip is to know when to stop working. For example, okay, so for example, imagine you're working on a project that requires a, a bit of creativity. Maybe you're writing your next book or a series of blog posts, or maybe you're designing your new a new room in your home. You may think that you have to work 24-7, figuratively speaking, of course, okay? We don't work 24-7. You may think that you have to work long hours and keep your head down and just power through to get it all done. And that's how many of us tackle projects. But it may actually be the worst thing for you when it comes to creative work. I mean, let's face it, if you're not feeling creative, you're not going to end up doing a good job. You're going to stare at a blank page, which will only stress you out even more. Forcing creativity rarely works. So instead, learn to recognize the signals that it might be time to stop work for the day. If you're not feeling creative, it's not something you can just force to happen. You have to learn to listen to your intuition. And if you're feeling stuck, take a break and walk away for a bit. In fact, you may even find it's during that break that your creativity starts flowing and you come up with a great new idea for whatever it is you're working on. It also works the other way, too. If your intuition is telling you that you're about to have a breakthrough and come up with the creativity you need to finish your project, then keep on working by all means. But what if you don't have any kind of project with a deadline? Maybe you just want to develop your creative side? Well, the same rules apply. You cannot force yourself to get the creative juices flowing. If you've been staring at a blank document on your computer monitor for 30 minutes, chances are you need to get up and walk away. Or maybe you can take a few minutes to just start writing and see what happens. Sometimes that can do the trick and trigger your creativity. You know yourself best. So learn to listen to your intuition and work with yourself instead of against yourself. While you can practice and develop your creativity, you can train yourself to be creative on demand, but part of that training is learning when to step away. By listening to that inner voice and recognizing those signs that you may be stuck, you'll find it much easier to produce those creative works you're looking for. And if all else fails, tap into the power of the hive. A mastermind group can really get that creativity flowing. And it doesn't matter if you're a business owner, a mom, the CEO of a major corporation. Sometimes you just can't find the motivation to think outside the box or be the least bit creative. And it's times like this that you need to seek some inspiration from others and one way to do that is by being part of a mastermind group. Now, we all know the benefits of being part of a mastermind, especially if you're a business owner. But what you may not realize is how those benefits translate into improved creativity in all aspects of your life. So one benefit is getting creative ideas from others. And sometimes you just, you just get in a rut and you don't feel creative at all. And that's when you go to your mastermind group and draw on their creativity. Let them know what you're working on and ask for their ideas and thoughts about it. And soon you'll have more ideas than you know what to do with. And sometimes just one comment from someone else is all it takes to turn your creative thinking back on. You're also pushed to think bigger. When you're part of a mastermind group, people will challenge you to think bigger than you've probably ever thought before. They're going to encourage you to step out of your comfort zone and stretch yourself to reach for bigger and better things. And if you're going to be thinking big, it's going to require you to use your creativity and think outside the box. It also gives you the opportunity to partner with others. You know, one of the biggest benefits to being part of a mastermind group is that you'll get to know those in the group with you and you'll start building relationships with them. 
And as time goes on, you may find someone you want to partner with on a project, or someone else might approach you about partnering with them. It's a win-win, as long as you, both of you do your fair share of the work. Even better, you'll experience how the other person thinks and works, which will in turn encourage you to think differently, otherwise known as be creative. And it's a prime time to do some brainstorming. When you work for yourself, there isn't anything much worse than getting stuck and not knowing how to move forward. But if you're part of a mastermind group, you'll be able to go to the group and brainstorm ideas with them. So let them tap into their creative thinking skills and knowledge to help you get unstuck and move forward again. These benefits are definitely not a huge exhaustive list of reasons to join a mastermind group, but I hope they show you how being part of one can kickstart your own creativity. Simply by discussing ideas with others in your peer group, you're going to discover new and different ways of approaching and solving problems, and that is the biggest benefit of all. When all else fails, music. Kickstart those creative juices with music. Create your own personal creativity playlist. If you're feeling overwhelmed or burnt out, it's time to get those creative juices flowing. But how do you do that if you're not feeling the least bit creative? There are so many different things you can do, and we've talked about a bunch of them already. You can take a walk, read a book, watch a movie, talk to a friend, just to name a few. Do all of the things that we've already discussed in this but we're going to focus on something that Albert Einstein used to do, and that's listen to music. Now, Albert Einstein didn't just listen to any music. He listened to Mozart, and there's a good reason behind that. The reason Mozart was a good choice and helped get Einstein's creativity flowing is because research has proven that certain music compilations and songs allow the brain to be more uh, creative. I'm sure by now you've all heard of the Mozart effect, okay? But that doesn't mean you have to follow in his footsteps and listen to Mozart to get your creative juices flowing, okay? Not all of us are classical music fans. So talk to a group of people, and more than likely, if you ask them what music makes them feel creative and helps them think better, no two of them are going to give you the same answer. Music has different effects on different people. So don't think you're going to have to go cultivate a love for classical music to benefit. Different types of music can also have different effects on your mood. So think about it. When you want to relax, do you listen to the music you work out to? Probably not. Your workout music is more than likely upbeat and fast paced and not something slow and soothing that you can relax to. And vice versa, you wouldn't want to try and work out to your playlist of relaxation music. So it's no different when it comes to turning on those creative juices. You'll have to find the music that inspires and motivates you. But here's a tip to keep in mind. When it comes to music and creativity, once you find some music that helps you get in that creative space, stick with it and listen to it over and over whenever you need to be in a creative frame of mind. Soon your brain will recognize that when listening to this specific music, it's time to turn on the creativity. So as you can see, music is one way to start to train yourself to be more creative. So start experimenting with some different music to find out what brings a feeling of creativity and, and innovative thinking. And remember, once you find that music that inspires you and sparks your creativity, keep listening to it whenever you want those creative juices to start flowing. And remember, practice makes perfect. Most people when they hear or think of creativity, think it's only important to people like musicians and artists, photographers, but that's just not the case. Creativity is essential to every one of us. Thinking creatively allows us to find new ways to solve common problems, among many other things. If you want to know how to boost your creativity, one of the best ways is to practice and improve your brainstorming skills. And what do you think of when you think of brainstorming? More than likely, the first thing that popped into your mind 
wasn't anything to do with using it as a technique to hone in on your creativity. Usually brainstorming is associated with business related things, your job. You you remember those terrible meetings? I know you do. Those terrible meetings where everyone shouts out ideas and someone jots them down on on a whiteboard only to erase them later for being unusable. Brainstorming doesn't have to be that way. In fact, it can be a fun way to work on developing your creative side. Those awful meetings did get one thing right, okay? The first thing you need to do is let go of your self-criticism and self-judgment. And whether that be about creativity, you know, the I don't have a creative bone in my body like I always felt, or brainstorming, you know, I don't know how to brainstorm, or both, you have got to let it go. And you're not going to have an open mind to be able to think clearly. Once you've done that, then you can move into the brainstorming phase. For your actual brainstorming session, grab a piece of paper and a pen and get ready to draw it out. Something like a simple mind map will work. That might mean drawing a big circle in the middle of the page and then connecting smaller circles. The big circle is going to be the main focus point. Um, So let's say it's a a problem you currently have. And then all the little circles connected to that one are going to be the different ideas or solutions as to how to work that problem out. And if you're not a fan of mind maps, well then just try making a big list of ideas. Some people call this a brain dump and it works exactly the same way as a mind map. The idea is to get as many ideas out of your head and onto the paper as possible. Don't think about whether a specific solution will work, just write it down. You'll go back later and refine them. One fun thing to experiment with is using a timer. Set your kitchen timer for five minutes and aim to get as many thoughts and ideas down on paper as possible. Racing against the clock like this can help you stop criticizing and instead focus on quantity which isn't something we do naturally. Don't spend a lot of time on this process. The idea with brainstorming is that you want to do it quickly and generate as many different ideas as you can within that short span of time. Once you're done with the brainstorming picture, whether it's a mind map or whatever you choose to call it, then you can narrow it all down. You can narrow down those different solutions that you listed until you get down to the top two or three that you think will work. As you begin to practice brainstorming, you'll find that it gets easier and easier for your creative side to come out, and that's the goal. So set aside some time, and it doesn't have to be a large chunk of time, even 10 to 15 minutes, but set aside some time each day to brainstorm, and it's going to help you develop more creativity. Read more to get your creative juices flowing. So if you still think that you're not creative, Trust me, you're not alone because there's so many of us that still, after all of this, think we're not creative. It's a subject that can bring angst to some people because they think they aren't or that they don't know how. And of course, as I've been saying through all of this, that really isn't true. Each and every one of us has the potential to tap into our creative side It's just a matter of practice and doing it regularly so we train ourselves to be creative. And one of the ways that you can do this is by reading on a very wide range of subjects. Reading stimulates your brain, and that's what gets your creative juices flowing. Not just any reading will do, though, okay? Blog posts, short articles, magazines, and the like are all a fun diversion, Um, but they're simply not going to turn your brain on the way a good book will. And here's why. Reading stimulates your brain. So just as an Olympic gold medalist has to keep fit if they want to compete well, you have to exercise your brain to keep it stimulated in order for creativity to flow. Your brain needs just as much exercise as the rest of your body. So it's time to start focusing on the importance of exercising your brain every day. Set aside 20 minutes a day to go to a quiet place, pick up a book, and read. And don't always read the same thing. 
stretch yourself. Choose between different genres to read. If you normally read romance novels, pick up a biography instead. Immersing yourself, even if just 20 minutes a day, in different subjects will really help your mind start to look at the world differently and in turn help your creativity start to come out. Reading improves your concentration. With all the gadgets and gizmos and electronics out there, it seems like we're always plugged into what's going on in the world. Most people are never truly concentrating on just one thing. Not that being plugged in is a bad thing, but sometimes it's a good idea to take a break from all of the negativity and all of the gadgets going on around us. And while there is sometimes a place for multitasking, we need to take a break from that too. When you read, it forces you to unplug and focus on just one thing in order to be fully engaged with the book. The more you do it, the more you'll get used to concentrating on just the task at hand, and that will help improve your concentration skills. By exercising that muscle, your creative thinking skills will develop more as well. Being able to concentrate helps you think more clearly, and that's when those creative thoughts come out. Reading improves your vocabulary. It's one of the best ways to improve your vocabulary skills. And while you may be wondering what vocabulary has to do with being creative, it can actually play a big role, especially if you're a creative writer or a blogger, content creator. Most writers out there will tell you that they spend a certain amount of time reading every day. The more you read, the more you will improve your vocabulary and you'll probably be surprised at all the different words you start to see in your writing. So aside from reading being a way to help you be more creative, books are fun. So what are you waiting for? Grab a book, set a timer every day, 20 minutes, and start exercising that brain and see how fast your creative thinking skills improve. Now let's face it, even the most creative people, for example, songwriters, musicians, authors, go through a dry spell once in a while where their creative well has dried up and it just needs replenishing. And one of the quickest ways to fill that well back up is to get out and visit other places where you're surrounded by inspiration and beauty. Take in a live show, whether music or theater. These two options have creativity written all over them. During a live music concert or a play, it's all about the audience and the energy they create for the performers. You never know what can happen during a live performance. Be inspired and let your creativity build off of the creativity of what you just saw and what you heard. Sometimes all it takes to get the creative juices flowing is to enjoy another art form. So make a date with your creative self to see what new musical is in town. You might be surprised at how inspiring it can be. Visit a museum or an art gallery. Not everyone is interested in spending time in a museum or an art gallery, but even if you think you're someone who just doesn't enjoy that kind of scene, you might want to force yourself to do it at least once. You may be surprised. You might find that you actually enjoyed it. But more than that, you can't get much more creative than sculptures and paintings. Look at the pieces and let your creativity take over. Think about what the piece means, why it was created the way it was. This one might sound a little morbid, but hang out in a cemetery. Now I know this may seem like an odd place to visit to get your creativity flowing, but it's actually a great place to work those creative thinking muscles. Grab a pen and a notebook and head to a nearby cemetery. Don't think of it as a sad place where someone's loved one has been laid to rest. Instead, look at those graves and start celebrating their lives. Pull out that pen and paper and start creatively writing their life stories. Where were they born? Who did they marry? What did they do for a living? How many kids did they have? Did they have any pets? Get as creative as you want. The idea here is to let the creativity flow and have fun with it. Get back to nature. 
Many people find that simply taking a stroll in a park or along a wooded trail is just what they need to refill the well. Simply getting out in the fresh air and away from the computer and the television and the smartphone and all the gadgets can cause you to relax and replenish your soul. So if you're feeling a little less creative or struggling to solve a problem, it might just be that your creative well has run dry. Get out in the world. Get away from your day-to-day -day tasks for a bit. And you'll soon find that those creative juices are flowing again. So I hope you took all these tips on being creative. Give them all a whirl and see what happens. Creativity is important, not just in business, not just in art. It's important in all aspects of our lives. So try a few of these things and see how they work for you. And I'll bet you're going to find that instead of thinking you don't have a creative bone in your body, you'll find that you actually have a well of creativity that just needs to be tapped into.